happy Friday afternoon. I am coming to you guys from my house because I have been stuck here for the last, wow, it's been over a week. Uh, last, not this Wednesday, but last Wednesday was the first day that I woke up with a little bit of a tickle in the back of my throat. And since then, my symptoms have um, kind of gotten a little bit worse and then a little bit better and then a little bit worse and today I'm feeling a little bit better, but basically um, whether you subscribe to the 24 hours with no symptoms or 72 hours with no symptoms, I am not there, so I have not been able to go back to work. So that's fine because you know what? Nobody's supposed to be at work, so why don't we all stay at home and build a computer, right? Hey. And this stream is going to be brought to you by Private Internet Access, I think. One second, I forgot to double check who my sponsor is for the stream before I started it. That's a classic, that's a classic tech tips move right there. Uh, did I leave the stream unlisted? I certainly hope I didn't. But that would be exactly the sort of thing that I would do. Yes, I think I forgot to change it to public on YouTube because it hides that button if you don't have it full screen. Yep, there we go. Oh, well, that's fine. I haven't really done anything yet anyway. And the good news is that when I opened that up, I was able to see the YouTube video description, which did in fact confirm that our sponsor for the video today is Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access hides your true IP and keeps anyone f like your internet service provider from snooping on what sites you're visiting and what data you're transferring to and from your devices. You can use it on up to five devices at once with a single account and you can try it for free. So check it out at the link in the video description. All right, that should be all fixed. I think we good. Nice, we're live everywhere now. This is gonna be a lot of fun, guys. So I haven't seen all the parts that I'm gonna be working with today, so why don't we run through them together? I've got my little remote doodad in my pocket here. Yeah, check this out. Using my ancient iFixit kit. This thing has served me very, very well. So for CPU, we've gone with a Ryzen 5 3600X. This is intended to be kind of like a Let's see, is autofocus on that thing? Oh, nice. Got my webcam over here for my secondary camera. So this is intended to be kind of like a value gaming machine. The target price point was $800, and it's actually Jake who put together the list of components for us today. Uh, some of them are ones that you guys will be pretty familiar with, like the 3600X. This thing really is a spectacular value. And some of them you'll probably be a little less familiar with. Check this out. So for our SSD, we've gone with the EX920 M.2 SSD from, yes, my friends, the one and only Hewlett Packard. Apparently HP has been getting into the value SSD game. So we'll be going with one of these. Apparently these are like actually pretty decent performance. It's only PCIe Gen 3, so we're not gonna be making the most of the Gen 4 capabilities of our processor. But as we showed in a recent video, there's really not much point to Gen 4 from a performance standpoint if all you're doing is playing games. So there you go, we've got a 512 gig SSD, which is small enough that you're not blowing your entire $800 budget on your storage, but big enough that you can actually load like three whole copies of Doom Eternal onto your system before you run out of space. I swear to you guys, hard drives are gonna be making a comeback over the next little bit in people's gaming machines because games are getting so big. Like what's the new, uh, What's the new COD, like 130 gigs or something stupid like that? So what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna take an SSD like this one, you're gonna partition off maybe like, I don't know, 250 gigs for your core programs and your operating system. Then you'll partition off another 250 gigs and use that with something like Primo Cache for a hard drive. So that way, whatever games you're playing most frequently can be cached to the SSD, but you'll actually have enough storage for a decent game library. Um, all right, for our motherboard, we've gone with the ASRock B450 Pro 4. Just a good, solid value board. ASRock has really gone all in on AMD, and that's a gamble that seems to be paying off extremely well for them. For our power supply, we've gone with the Classic. Okay, so this is EVGA's GD series. The GD is for good. Not great, but good, you know? Not gonna blow up actually gonna deliver the power it's rated for, 80 plus gold efficiency, 
you know, no modular interface or anything fancy like that, but it's good, you know. Uh, for RAM, we're going with some G-Skill Rip Jaws. Wait, oh, we didn't grab the AMD specific ones. That's okay. These are pretty good specs. So these are DDR4 3200 and uh, there you go, CL16. So that's about the sweet spot in terms of price to performance for an AMD Ryzen third gen system right there. Something to note, guys, is, man, the... The terminology is going to get real confusing over the next little bit because Ryzen 3rd Gen on desktop is Zen 2, okay? And then Ryzen 4th Gen on mobile is Zen 2. So that means Ryzen 4th Gen on desktop is probably going to be the upcoming Zen 3. And the numbers are just, they're all over the place. So first gen Ryzen was Zen. Good job, AMD. Second gen Ryzen was Zen Plus. Okay, um, good try, AMD. And then now it's all just basically gone to crap. So for desktop, Gen 3 Ryzen. This is a, this is a good price to performance uh, spot to be in. And for graphics, we've gone with the RTX 2060. I believe this is the KO. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to have to message Jake. I don't see anything indicating on the box anywhere that this... Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. The giant KO right there. Silly me. I was looking at the product number. How, how funny. What a, what a silly thing to do. And then I was also looking at the... Uh, ah, yes. The part number. But no, there were no indications there. Just, just this KO right here. So this is the KO which is actually based on the same physical GPU as the 2070, if I recall correctly. Um, so what that means is that even though the clock speeds and functional units are a little bit different from a normal 2060, it will perform very similarly in games, but actually a little bit better in professional applications that can make use of its extra, its extra oomph. Uh, oh yeah, case. We've gone with the Deepcool Metrex. 55v3. So without further ado, why don't we, why don't we get started? Let's, let's build a computer, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, guys, I'm building a computer. You guys are, if you guys are going to just talk about nothing but the facial hair, I'm going to have to get rid of it. That's the way it's going to have to be. It's, it's becoming a distraction for the class, all right? I am, I am trying to make a video here and literally 90% of the comments are about the beard. So the story behind the beard is that I was stuck at home for a couple of days and I sort of realized that while I was at least bothering to get dressed in the morning, um, I was not really finding the time to go through my, my full morning routine. I always brush my teeth. I can't stand like tooth funk and bad breath is a, is a, is a personal trigger of mine. Like there's just, there's just no excuse for it. It's not that much work to have breath that doesn't stink. Um, but I hadn't bothered to shave for a couple of days and I was like, oh, you know, that would be kind of meme-tastic. Why don't I just, why don't I just not shave the entire time that I'm in self-isolation? And then I had, sorry, one sec. I had only intended to be isolated for like a couple of days because I was going to go back to work after having been uh, symptom free for 24 hours and I had planned to be symptom free for 24 hours basically immediately. Well, it didn't work out that way and I ended up just actually being sick. So now I just actually have a beard. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and this board is evidently not completely new because it wouldn't normally ship with the back plate taken off. but. Um, yeah, we probably used it for a previous project or something like that. A lot of people ask, hey guys, you know, what do you do with all those computers you build? It's like, wow, if only we had the technology to take apart a computer and uh, reuse it for a different project so that we would have, you know, that hardware still to use for other projects. That, that, is, exactly, that is exactly what we do. Uh, when we're done with a computer build, we take it apart and we reuse it a lot of the time. Um, I mean, every once in a while, a machine will get left together, like Jake managed to convince me to leave his uh, copper 
copper machine together because he kind of needed a new workstation for work anyway. So we made a deal where he had to change out the CPU and like take out one of the graphics cards or something. But yeah, he's using that still. But for the most part, yeah, we just take them, we just take them apart and then throw them on the shelf. And then when we need to do like a, you know, an $800 build tutorial on a, on a stream or something, then we, we use it for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this board back to its default state. Where we run into trouble is when we forget to fully take them apart, like when we accidentally leave M2s on motherboards, uh, excuse me, M.2s on motherboards, that has been a real problem for us over the last little bit. All right, so let's do the CPU first. Ryzen 5 3600X. This thing is such a boost. A boost? Sorry, I was, <laughs> I was reading the boost clocks off the box to uh, double, double check what they were. This thing is such a beast. Like, six core processor for this price would have been unthinkable. You know, back even like four, four or five years ago when six core and actually many more core than that processors were readily available, just really expensive. AMD has really made that, uh, that triangle super small these days. So there's my little golden triangle. I'm gonna line that up with the little triangle on the motherboard here. So the way to know which way it goes is uh, if you're holding the board in a sensible orientation, like, wait, what? why is that not going in? Get in there. There we go, all right, that's better. If you're holding the board in a sensible orientation, like with the IO down, the text will be the right way. Ha ha. You know, you'd think they would think of stuff like that. You know what we should do? Is we should just make it so that the text is right side up when the user is installing it with the motherboard sitting right side up. There you go, AMD. There's an idea for you free of charge. All I want is like 20 bucks, okay? Just send me a $20 check. You can use my idea. Your text will be right side up when people install it. It'll be super easy to instruct people to orient their CPU correctly from now on. Now, it used to be that the CPU socket could be oriented like any which way on the motherboard and something like that might not be practical. But these days, the, uh, the guidance for the keep out zones and all that stuff pretty much dictate that people put the socket on the same way. Uh, now, someone, I guess, theoretically could engineer a board where it was oriented differently and that would break the whole system, but that wouldn't be my problem. All right, let's go ahead and install our memory. Hey, wow, look at that. Jake even pre-opened the tabs for me. He didn't, it was probably Matthias or Tyler whoever took apart the previous system. We had, uh, we had uh, Ivan, our, our resident, our formerly resident Slav in for, uh, for a cameo appearance in a video a little while ago. Every time I install RAM, I think of him. Uh, what is it? Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, uh, something, something, memory slots, four and two. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the general rule, though, um, in the way that's easier for me to remember it, aside from just thinking of him, is that you want to have as much room for your heatsink as possible. Most systems get um, only half of their memory slots populated, so generally speaking, you would find the primary slots farther from the CPU, giving it more room to breathe. All right, next up, we've got our M.2. I am... I'm very curious about what exactly it is that inspired HP to get into the, the DIY parts market. Because the funny thing about it is companies like Dell or HP or Acer, they engineer their own versions of all kinds of things from motherboards to SSDs to power supplies. And, and they do real engineering for them, um, even if they aren't you know, let's say Alienware, okay? Even if Alienware, which is by Dell, is not a manufacturer of power supplies and they get it built by, you know, FSP or Seasonic or whoever the case may be, they still, a lot of the time, as part of specking out that unit, will do real engineering work on it. And so it's always been kind of, you know, baffling to me that there's less crossover, right? Because uh, you see the guys that build custom parts getting into the system building game. I mean, look at NZXT with their build. Um, so you can now order a system from NZXT. Whoops. Um, anyway, sorry, we'll go, go down here. Um, but it always kind of confused me that they didn't really go the other way. I mean, or it confused me a little bit. Like, I didn't want any of that stuff. So I thought, you know, oh, well, maybe they just assume it's, like, not good enough to compete in the custom space. But 
yeah, these actually seem to have a pretty good reputation. So pretty, pretty bog standard. Um, it's got, looks like, yep, yeah, four NAND flash chips on it. It's got a DRAM cache back there. Actually, it looks like it's got two uh, DRAM cache chips. I'm just going to take this label off so we can have a look here. Oh, they have rebranded the controller. If I had to guess, I'd say it's from like Fizen or something. There's no way HP built their own SSD controller, is there? That would that would surprise me. That would surprise me very, very much. Guys, let me know in the comments. Do you know who makes the controller on this drive? Uh, I don't see anyone. Wow, the chat is going real quick, fast styles. All right, let's go ahead and get this drive installed while we see if anyone uh, knows what controller's on this thing. Uh, Real Velton says, why not just use a two and a half inch SSD? Well, because the pricing of M.2 NVMe SSDs has gotten so close to SATA that you might as well just use an M.2. And there are cases where there can be a benefit to using an M.2. So for one thing, it's easier to install. I'm done already. I don't have to run any cables or anything like that. And for number two, um, there are situations where you will get better performance. If you happen to plug in a, uh, a Thunderbolt external drive, which you won't be doing on this because it doesn't have Thunderbolt, but I believe that should be a 10 gig USB Type-C. So if you were to plug in like uh, a, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, I, I don't know what they call them. If you were to plug in a USB 3 10 gigabit drive, then and copy a file, it would finish faster to an NVMe SSD. In, in, a, in a way that really affects your life in a meaningful way? Probably not, but if you have the performance, you might as well take it, right? Oh, apparently it's uh, Silicon Motion makes the controller for HP's SSD. They've done some decent stuff from the last little bit. I mean, nothing that's going to be competitive with like, you know, a Samsung Pro Series or anything like that, but certainly a, a functional, you know, DRAM cached SSD with a, a decent controller on it. So uh, what else we got? That was it for CPU, motherboard, memory, SSD. I always feel like these builds are you know, going to be over in no time, especially now that you load so many things onto the motherboard itself before you have to really even start building a computer. Um, but then you start to do the bigger things like power supply and cable management, the tedious stuff. It's like, oh yeah, that took a very long time, didn't it? All right, let's go ahead and get our cooler installed. So the thing about Ryzen, is that you can talk all day about you know needing great cooling for your computer system because you want to overclock or whatever the case may be. But the cold hard truth is Ryzen don't really overclock much. Um, AMD has got these things tuned to the max, pretty much out of the box. And as long as the motherboard makers are implementing their BIOS correctly, you're going to get a basically peak performance out of your Ryzen 3rd Gen CPU. You can overclock, but you're getting into pretty exotic uh, cooling solutions if you want to see a, a significant performance boost. So unless you're after silent operation, the stock cooler ain't a bad way to go. And we're looking to save a buck on this system, so we're going with it. I'm regretting uh, putting back the CPU socket to its stock configuration now because actually this cooler, which is, what is this, the Wraith, whatever the crap, Guys, which, which Wraith is this? Help me out. I can't remember. Um, this cooler actually screws into the back plate, which is a much better mounting system than this stupid plastic clip thing that AMD has had going on for years and years. I don't know why they just didn't do away with the plastic clip system altogether. Like, if you're going to have to include these metal screws and a back plate, which cost was one of the considerations for why they had these plastic clips on in the past, if you're going to have to have the back plate and these metal screws anyway, why not just make the standard mounting mechanism screw into that, which apparently they did. So then just why, bo why bother with any of this? I don't know. Just, just do away with those plastic things once and for all. That's the way that I would like to have it done. I'm just going to change my uh, screwdriver bit here. Link me the shopping list of this build, says uh, Ruben Sandwich. Uh, Wraith Spire. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the Wraith Spire, apparently. Um, the links to all the parts for this build are actually in the video description on YouTube already, but 
you're you're watching on uh, Twitch because you prefer Twitch for whatever reason. Uh, they're also linked in the video description on Floatplane, which, oh, I'm so sorry, Floatplane chat. I haven't had you guys up, but I'm going to bring you up now on my laptop here. Seth Admin, kind of want to see Linus with a Luke beard. Okay, you guys are only talking about the beard over there. Everyone's just talking about the beard. Guys, I'm trying to, now I feel like, you know, a woman with breasts might feel sometimes. Like, look, can you focus on the content, you know, for two seconds? You know, just stop. Stop with the, you know, secondary sexual characteristics, all right? Crispy says, I love you, please reply. All right, I have replied. Hopefully I haven't opened up a can of worms here. I have replied, but I'm not interested. I'm happily, happily married, all right? All right, there's our cooler and I'm gonna do my trademark little knot here. I still remember finding one of the computers that I had built like many years prior at the uh, at the CPU. Hold on, sorry, one sec. CPU fan two slash pump. CPU fan one right there um, at the NCIX uh, auction, and I could tell it was mine because one of my old little tricks back before it was commonplace for even stock coolers to have sleeved cables was to uh, tie the three individual wires into a braid so that they would stay together and look a little bit, I don't know. It was distinctive. It was distinctive, if nothing else. I did not forget thermal paste, guys. I should have mentioned that, though. Uh, this cooler was brand new and already had a thermal pad on the bottom. So don't worry, guys. All good. You probably couldn't tell because this webcam ain't great. Um, hold on. Where did it go? Ah, oh, there it is. <clears throat> I had intended... Ah! Uh, to use a classic, our old Blackmagic cinema camera for our B cam for this, but I realized as I was about to go live, see, it's working, it's working great all these years later. There you go, see that, look at that, oh yeah. So I had intended to use this as our B cam, but I realized right as I needed to go live and I was getting things set up, I forgot, it's SDI out which is a feature, not a bug. Like that was a big deal. A camera at this price with this image quality with professional features like SDI out and I don't have an SDI capture card at my house. So I'm stuck with the webcam again, unfortunately. Uh, oh, hold on, I'm gonna turn this off. You will see some footage off this thing over on Short Circuit though. If you're not subscribed on Short Circuit, make sure that you are. Um, that's our quaternary channel. I guess at this point, we can go Linus Tech Tips, Tech Quickie, Tech Linked. I mean, we could count Channel Super Fun. We could count LMG Clips. Um, do we have six channels? Sep Septenary? I actually don't even know what the term is for that. Anyway, make sure you're subscribed on Short Circuit. Uh, all right, what do we got next here? Ooh, ooh, this is important. Always whoops, keep track of things when you are building a machine because you never know when someone's going to need these screws and these clips six months down the line when this has been sitting on the shelf for however long. Yes, SDI is boss. It just kind of screwed me over today. It's funny because I even thought of it. When I asked them to send me over the AVIO capture card, the HDMI one, I was like, you know what, maybe you should send the SDI one too, just in case. But then I was like, I don't have any SDI stuff at my house. Ha! <laughs> um, Got someone asking, I don't know, the chat's moving too fast, I can't tell. Got someone asking what laptop this is. This is the XPS 13 2-in-1. Um, I am obligated to disclose that I uh, did a sponsored video on this one, but that is not, in fact, why I use it. I just really like it. And then the skin on it, uh, I managed to convince Dbrand to dig up some of their old carbon fiber pink, um, much to the chagrin of the owner over there. Uh, I just told him I wasn't going to put a dbrand skin on my laptop if he couldn't find me any of the pink, and so he uh, he acquiesced. Uh, why did I take these SATA cables out? I don't need those. All right, that's fine. So we're going to do some tidy up, put our SATA cables away, put our extra mounting hardware away, put our anti-static bag away. All right, motherboard's prepped. Got the I.O. shield. Let's go ahead and move on to the case. What is what from the 80s? What are you, what are you float plane guys talking about? It wouldn't be as bad if you could lower the exposure on the webcam. I think it's set to auto, and the reason for that is that 
I am next to a window in order to get enough light in here and the sun keeps getting covered or uncovered by the clouds so I had to leave it on auto so that it would compensate for that. Man, that chat is moving way too fast. All right, let's get the case open, shall we? Uh-oh. Oh. oh. I need that. Oh, there's a couch behind me. Yep. Oh, tripped on it. Don't worry. I'm good. Okay, good. That's still working. <laughs> Oof. I don't actually know if this one is brand new or if it's been used before. Cases are always the really fun one to grab out of our warehouse because I would say a good 60% of the time, if they've been used before, not all the hardware was put back properly. Thank you, my staff. Oh man, you know when you can tell you're gonna get zapped? Like the hairs on my arms are standing up just moving close to this thing. I'm gonna get it over with. Oh, that wasn't bad. Oh, it's probably gonna get me again when I take the styrofoam off. Oh wow, this got, this got hurt in shipping. This is why this stiff foam sucks so much because especially once someone, let's say a system integrator, were to, to load up a, a full system in the thing, it's a lot more weight. And one hit on this stuff, even with just the case inside, it's done. So another hit and you start getting some really, really bad stuff happening if you've got a full system loaded in there. Did anyone notice Linus's Prusa 3D printer? Uh, what are you talking about? I already sent that back to the office. Uh, that's weird. Yeah, no, it's not here. Yeah, no, I sent that back with Matthias this morning. Um, so that's for a video that we've done supporting Operation Shields Up. That's gonna be coming up uh, probably within the next, I don't know, hopefully the next very short period of time. Um, but yeah, we've actually got over 20 Prusa 3D printers running at the office right now making uh, face shields. So it should be pretty cool. All right, sorry chat, you're out of the reflection now. Uh, I seem to be short one of the thumb screws for the tempered glass side panel. At least the side panel didn't break though. I've got what appears to be RGB wiring. Does this case have RGB? That would be very unlike Jake to blow extra budget on RGB on a build like this for 800 bucks. So it must just not cost more or something. Uh, are we really... Are we really short a screw? I do hear some stuff rattling around in there. It might just come out. Hello? That sounded like a screw, right? Okay. We're gonna have to do this the patient way. I can see that this case has been used. There's one of the PCI bracket things pulled out already. That's the super cheap way of doing that. What's gonna be the best way to show you guys what I'm doing here? Because I realize now that that webcam angle kinda needs to change. And I do not have a convenient way to change it. It's uh, unfortunately not on like a, like a flexi arm or anything like that. It's just on a C-stand. Okay, where is that thing that's rattling around in here? I don't see it. It's not behind the front panel, is it? How's the front panel come off this thing? Ow, my face. Hey! Hold on, where's my... Where's my camera switcher? Alt two, got it. So there's uh, all four of our tempered glass side panel retention screws. We good, all right, fantastic. Well, you know what we could do is we could just build the system upright and then maybe I could just angle it up a bit. Hey, yeah, we could make that work, couldn't we, ladies and gentlemen? There we go. All right, well, I'm gonna pop the front panel Back on for now, it looks like the way the cooling's configured in this case is three fans for intake. Unfortunately, that's not a filtered intake. It does have like kind of little grills here, but I 
I think dust will get caught in them, but I wouldn't describe them as a filter. And there's also not a ton of um, like intake area here, so those, those three fans might just be kind of necessary to maintain decent cooling in the thing. I figured out what the RGB was for, so it looks like there's an RGB light strip down here, and that's wired in right here. Uh, other than that, nothing is wired into the front, which seems to be tempered glass, so that's nice because the I.O. is all right here. So we've got power, USB 3, USB 2, an LED control button, headphone, and microphone jacks. All right, let's go ahead and get our I.O. shield installed. Fun fact, uh, one of my staff was telling me um, that apparently ASUS uh, patented the built-in I.O. shield, which is why they're the only ones that do that. So there you go, the more you know. It really is quite nice and convenient. I do like it. Because this is a good way to cut yourself. Mind you, half the reason for that is that this is a really cheap IO shield. I still think there is an amazing business opportunity out there for someone to produce custom IO shields. Like it could not be that hard. I'm not saying it would be easy and like I could do it in an afternoon. I'm just saying I think it's got to be doable for someone to be able to make like a, like a, like a machine learning thing or, or, or something, like a smart scanner of some sort where people could basically send like a couple key angles, like pictures from a couple key angles of their motherboard and you'd be able to spit out like a custom, like a just laser cut IO shield that would match it. I think there's a lot of people out there with motherboards that are missing their IO shields that would pay like, if it was a decent board that I was trying to that I was like trying to use, I would pay I'd say fourteen ninety nine. Like I think I'd pay fifteen bucks for an IO shield for it if I didn't have it. And MSI apparently uses pre installed shields too. Okay, how did I miss that? Well, there you go. ASRock apparently does it too. Well, there you go. See, this is what happens. This is this is why I do have to try to keep up on these things rather than you know hashtag lie ness. Um, just let them do everything for me because sometimes they get it wrong. Okay, so let's have a look at how everything is pre-wired in here. Oh boy, I don't have snips. Mm-hmm. That could be slightly problematic. Um, I will call my beautiful wife to hopefully bring me a thing I need. Yay! Man, have you guys been watching the stock market lately? I don't. I have nothing invested, thankfully, right now. N no gold, no stocks, nothing. Um, but man, this roller coaster is just—it's wild. Uh, so I, I watch the tech stocks just to so that I know what's going on. Um, but like Nvidia is down 4.52 percent today. AMD down 4.27 percent, and you know they'll go up 10 percent another day. Um, hi. Could I get um, side cutters? Yeah, also which one can you put on the one view what's the address? Super chats? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, super chats. Um, he means people who subscribe on Floatplane and contribute to us regularly, right? Just kidding, super chats are good too. In other news, Floatplane. Uh, yeah, AMD crashed. Watching, <laughs> watching the Bitcoin subreddit right now. Oh, I know, right? Whether you're a bull or a bear for Bitcoin, you're right <laughs> these days. Oh, man. Are these side cutters? Those are side cutters. Yes, my dear. Um, actually, I should have probably told you this before you went out to the garage and came back. Um, could I also have some cable management supplies? Wow, these are horrible. Uh, I think I have another pair of side cutters with a dark blue handle. I can't cut. This is unbelievable. I have never encountered a worse pair of side cutters than this. I cannot cut, oh man, I can't cut this plastic cable tie. Like it seems to be functional, like there's not a lot to go wrong here, but I cannot cut it. <laughs> I should throw these away. They're quite literally the worst. Oh, these must belong to my dad or like must have belonged to him at some point because 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys this. They are completely flat. They're not side cutters. They're side mashers. Okay, they're yeah. like senior citizen side cutters. These weren't in your, in your sharp things. No, they're not supposed to be in sharp things. And these also aren't sharp. These can be literally thrown away. They are unusable. Thank you. You're the best. You know those aren't just words, right? You really are the best. She's the best. All right, let's throw the Sio shield back on here. Mm, okay, that's good. All right, let's go ahead and cut off this old cable management. Boop. That's how that was supposed to go in the first place. Okay. Man, this doesn't give me a lot of room to stand over here this angle, but that's okay. All right, so there's all our front I.O. We can deal with that later. Here's our front fans. So what the crap are these plugged into? I don't really understand what's going on here. So fan one, fan two, fan, like what are all these, what are all these other fan leads coming off of this? Is the, I am legitimately super confused. Okay, so I'm just gonna unplug all of the front fans. There we go. What is this? It seems to be a five-way fan splitter. So there's one power plug. There you go. I can't remember. Would this be female or male? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's say female. It's one female. One, two, three, four, five male connectors. I mean, as long as you don't, you know, exceed the uh, current limit of your uh, your header, I guess that's fine. But then what is all this? Oh, this has got to be RGB. But why are there so many things plugged into it already? Uh-huh. Main. Um, okay, well, I guess we're just gonna kind of wing it with those. I'm not adding any more RGB to the case, so what I'll probably do is just like cram it up there, throw a cable tie on it, and call that good. All right, we'll wire the fans back in later. In the meantime, why don't we go ahead and install the power supply? Sorry, I gotta make sure that whatever messages I'm getting are not about, uh... oh man. Okay, yeah, that's not the most disastrous thing ever, but pretty, uh... Pretty brutal. Um, so I filmed a video last night where, or I tried to film a video last night about dye infusing um, the tops of keycaps to make your own custom full color keycaps. Super cool topic. Unfortunately, we accidentally bought dye that was not um, like infusion dye. It was just regular <laughs> printer ink. So I went to. Uh, not my fault, by the way, not my fault, but I went to do it and it didn't work at all. So our plan to finish the video today was to just go to a shop that is set up for, for printing with infusion dye and, um, <laughs> and then just use that. Just be like, hey, well, LOL, we did it wrong, but uh, hey, learn from our mistakes uh, and it's fine. Don't worry, we've got something. Let's show you how to actually press them onto the keycaps now. Uh, unfortunately, the shop we were planning to use apparently let go of all of their staff and uh, the soonest they're going to be able to get us anything is next week. See, this, this is how the economy crashes, right? It's like everyone panics because business is down, gets rid of all their staff, and then now they have no staff. So when the business is ready to come back, well, now it's not just a coronavirus blip. Now it's a downturn in your business and a very significant one at that. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not trying to lecture people. I'm not saying that they necessarily had a choice. A lot of small businesses, if they're lucky, might have a month worth of, worth of float. And just because you have a month's float doesn't mean you want to burn it all in one go. Like I can see why people would panic after a week or two, like especially really cutthroat industries like the restaurant industry. It's brutal. It's brutal out there. But it also just does become a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy when, um, as a reaction to a downturn, you slash all your staff and then you have no way to fulfill orders. 
That's all I'm saying. So our goal for the downturn, um, actually had a conversation with um, with Luke about float plane as well. He was like, look, hey, I don't know where your headspace is at, but like, you know, if there's anything that we can do to make sure that, you know, everyone's job is protected. I was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, dude. You've been working with me a long time. Um, you know, my personal goal, um, mine and Yvonne's goal for this entire thing is for no one in, in either of our companies to lose their jobs. Um, we may ask some people to apply for the Canadian government's uh, benefits, um, which will be paid out through EI, and we will have to issue them a record of employment. But technically, you're supposed to issue a record of employment anytime your, uh, your wages are interrupted for, I think it's seven days anyway. That doesn't mean you lose your job. You just have to issue an ROE. Um, and the reason for us having them go through the government is then it doesn't cost us anything. And it's actually very similar to the sick pay program that we put in place anyway. So we're doing, uh, we're doing two weeks just covered by us out of pocket. And if for whatever reason you're not ready to come back to work after two weeks, um, then we're asking people to go through the government. But they have not lost their job 100%. They still have their job. Um, I am having a really hard time putting this screw into the power supply. Hello. OK. Really wish I had my orange screwdriver right now, but it's actually dead. Uh, the ratchet mechanism has just completely gone in the last probably, I don't know, a couple weeks or so. There we go. Finally got one. I mean, it shouldn't surprise any of you guys if you're, if you're woke that uh, I don't know how to put in a power supply, right? Take, take, the, take the wool off from, from over your eyes. Wake up and smell the kibble. Now that's an old reference. Jason Wade says, my dogs are barking one sec. Dude, you're in the YouTube chat. Nobody can hold a conversation in there anyway. Who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm not going to. You know what? Actually, I will wait. I'm going to wait for Jason. I'm going to read some float plane, some float plane chats until Jason gets back after having dealt with his dog. Uh, what, what do we got here? Oh, F. F for respects. Thanks, guys. That's very, that's very helpful contribution you're making right there. Um, Linus, did you update the BIOS? I believe because this board has been used fairly recently, the BIOS is in fact updated. Yes. Uh, Jason, are you back yet? Can I continue? I'm not seeing Jason there yet. That's fine, Jason. I can wait. You go. You go. Put your dog outside or whatever. Jason must have a big house. Because, like, he's been gone for a while. Still not back. I mean, either that or the dog is, like, you know, not being cooperative about going outside. Like, sometimes you're like, you know, go on, go on, go out. And they, like, they look like they're going to go, but then they, like, stop. And they're like, do I really have to go? And you're like, yeah, go on, you get out. And then you, and then you kind of get up from your chair. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. And then you kind of sit back down because she's like, yeah, I faked him into it or her into it. And then they're like, oh, but do I really have to go? And then you have to like actually get up and go like take them out. Um, sorry, Jason, we really can't wait any longer, unfortunately. So you're either, you know, if you're such a big baller that you have like a gigantic house anyway, then I think you can get someone to build a computer for you if you can't uh, tune into the whole stream here and see how to screw these screws into the power supply. Oh, I'm not, I don't even have the right angle for you guys anyway. Hold on, let's get you, let's get you that right angle. This keyboard always goes to sleep, so. I have really been taking my sweet time. Oh, is Jason back? You know what? Good timing, Jason. You actually really didn't miss much. Wait a minute. Oh, weird. EVGA puts two full sets of screw holes on their power supplies, so you can screw them in however you want. Oh, that's neat. Very cool. Good job, EVGA. They think, they think of little things like that, you know? All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do some rudimentary cable management here. Get most of these things going to the right places. Oh, let's try not to lose my laptop. Um, the Steka says, the perfect occasion for an orange LTT edition screwdriver. I would be lying if I said we hadn't thought of that. But I can say no more, unfortunately. All right, we're going to run our 8-pin. There we go. 
That's the CPU 8 pin. You can tell because it splits into four and four rather than six and two. You run that up through the top, top grommet up here. There you go. So that's ready to be where it needs to be. Uh, how many plugs do we need on this KO graphics card? I'm just gonna check that real quick here. Wow, that is some kind of kludgy, but uh, definitely effective packaging, EVGA. You can tell this is one of those like, Nvidia calls them up like, hey, we've got a bunch of these GPUs. We need to do a rando card with them. You wanna take them all? And they're like, oh yeah, let's figure out how to package this. I guess we're just gonna cut a sheet of foam and wrap it around it because we're not gonna design custom packaging for like a weirdo one-off like this. Uh, RTX 2060, oh, yeah, here we go. So a single eight pin, that's what we're gonna need. That's like a, a long KO tradition. I remember the, uh, actually, no, it wasn't a KO. It was the 7900 GTO was another one of those EVGA NVIDIA collabs where nobody else had that, that card at that price and they were just basically clearing out all the 7900 GTXs, but at like half the price. It's a common tactic to create a new SKU that's basically the same thing at a lower price rather than trashing the price of your, you know, your GTX, like your, your top of the line series. Um, does this power supply not have any Molex connectors? Oh no, it does. There's one at the end here, and then on the other one, there's two at the end. Okay, it does, it does have Molex connectors. We might not need any of them, because it looks like the fans all, wait, yes we will. We're gonna need one SATA connector. Look at that, just for the RGB button up at the top of the case. We can go ahead and wire that up now. Unplug this connector if you use motherboard to control the lighting. Oh, I guess we could use the motherboard to control the lighting, actually. What would be the easiest way to do that, though? Hmm. I could not tell you. I guess I'd have to have all the same connect. I, oh, I guess I'd just need, yeah, one of these style connectors, which I definitely do not have right now. All right. All right, so we're going to plug this in. In terms of cable management, I think I'm just going to jam all of the SATA and Molexes down here in the front of the power supply under the basement. This is a live build, not a, uh, you know, I have three hours to cable manage. I mean, <clears throat> have someone else cable manage for me and then come back and it's magically done. So you guys are going to see how I actually build a computer when I'm in a hurry to get something done. I want this behind the 24 pin. There we go. So we'll just cram that in there a little. Cram that in a little bit more. Let's go ahead and do some more cramming. I feel like I'm uh, back in school and doing so much cramming right now. Cram, cram, cram. Cramity, cram, 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 cram. Doing some more cramming. More cramming, maximum crammage. Hey, and it's gone. Beautiful, it's cable managed. All right. Power supply is installed. Let's go ahead and throw the motherboard in, shall we? What are the odds this case has all of the appropriate standoffs already installed in it? Look at that, it does. This is gonna be so easy. It's gonna be like pie level easy. You know, like 3.14 out of 10 easy. Or difficulty, yeah, no, no, like 10 out of, seven out of 10 easy, there. 3.14 difficulty. All right, where are my screws at? Oh, don't worry, we good. All the essentials are still up here. Oh, that's how you're supposed to plug in the RGB. They've got an adapter from the locking connector that they use to something that you're more likely to find on your motherboard. Oh, cool. I don't know if this might, oh, it does too. Does it have five volt RGB though? It might, yes, it does. It has addressable uh, RGB down at the bottom. Cool, all right, so it's got a header for that. Nice. Uh, 
yeah, I think I've got, I think I've got everything I need here. That's a nice little touch. Maybe I do understand why Jake thought it was worth the extra for the RGB with this case. All right, motherboard screws, we'll start with, I really need a stronger magnet on my screwdriver. This could be a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, something I didn't show you guys before, but that I did do was uh, bending back this little tab on the IO shield here. I hate those when you get them stuck in the connector. All right, we only need six screws. Can I do it standing up? Oh, okay, no, it's fine. All good, okay. Uh, oh yes, this is how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna do the reach through. Okay, I'm gonna put this bloody screw back on the screwdriver. I'm gonna get you guys a bit, get you guys a better angle here. Oh, I could have done that ages ago. Oh, that would have been so much better. Wait, where'd my screwdriver go? Oh, got it, it's here. Oh, where'd the screw that was on there go? Well, nothing we can do about it now. <laughs> Come on, stay on there. Okay, here we go. So I'm just using pressure against the back to hold the motherboard in place. And I need a screw hole. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on there, little buddy. Oh, wait, shoot. Are these not 632 threaded? Ah, they're not. They're at M, whatever the crap. Are these M4? I think they're M4. They're either M4 or M3. I can't remember. can never remember that. Don't know why. It doesn't seem that hard, you know? Like, I can remember the dummy imperial one. I can't remember the metric ones. I should know metric. I am Canadian. All right, sweet. Motherboard is basically in now. That's half the screws. This is one of those like kind of pinner skinny motherboards. It's like ATX sort of, except that it's not because it's not as long as a standard ATX board. They went and they put in the classic 10th uh, screw hole though. So normally on a full size ATX, you would have um, nine. And then there's this like extra one that back when I got into computers, Intel was the only one that still adhered to the, the full standard and put that screw hole in. Everyone else just did the nine. Uh, but they went and they put that one on, so it's a seventh in this case. While we've got easy access to the motherboard, that's the best time to plug in all the things to it. So we'll take our our two four pins. So this is another mark of like a good but not great power supply. These don't have any kind of lock to hold them together. So you just got to kind of hold them while you put them in. I mean, it's not that hard. If you've done it enough times, you can do it pretty quickly, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, it's a creature comfort or rather it's a lack of a creature comfort. I do like having that, that lock in there. It does make a difference. Uh, these ones actually, oh yeah, again, they don't have a full proper lock. They just have like a little tab. I don't mind that though. That's a lot better than having no nothing. In this case, there's a little bit too much strain on this cable though, and this is gonna be a bit of a bear to plug in. <laughs> Only because I have to do it from behind the system though. <laughs> if I didn't have you guys here, if it weren't for those darn kids, um, I would have this done already. <laughs> oh, well that explains why it's um, not grabbing on okay there. It goes on the other side. You can tell from the arrows. It's got these handy dandy little arrows that show you that those arrows go together. Well, there's probably a better way to indicate that, but who am I to critique? Oh, right, a critic. Ha ha. Did you guys see that? Uh, I think it was on Instagram or something, Twitter, I don't know. But someone posted that their dad looks just like the food critic from Ratatouille. It's amazing. He does. He looks just like it, like him. Forget his name, but we watched that movie with our kids pretty recently. Great movie. I feel like there's a there's this kind of divide for Pixar movies. There's the ones that are like really great movies, and then there's the ones that sell a lot of toys, like, like Cars. Cars is terrible. It's, it's awful. It's not not good at all in any way. But 
Man, the number of like, cars bed spreads that I've seen over the years. It's like, yep. Yep, that did pretty well. It's like, it's no mystery why they didn't make another Incredibles for 12 years or whatever. Because I don't think Incredibles sells a lot of toys. Maxo Drive says, you just don't like Larry the Cable Guy? I don't mind Larry the Cable Guy at all. My problem is Owen Wilson. Like, nothing personal against him. I'm sure he's a fine human being. I just, I just, I can't stand it. It's like, wow. 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 Cars. Wow. Like, just, I can't. I just can't. And like, that's his shtick, and that works, and you know, he has been a great success as a, as a rom-com, you know, actor, and like, I'm sure he's done something more serious than that at some point. I don't know. I don't watch it because I don't, I just, I, I just, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some, got, we got some Owen Wilson fans that are like not happy right now, but you know, not everyone can be a fan of everything, you know? So, Cars, bad movie, but also I could be biased AF. So there's that. Yeah, if Owen Wilson's watching this channel, his heart is broken. I don't know, I mean, all of like, all of production land is basically shut down right now. For all I know, he is watching this channel, but I doubt it. If you are, I'm sorry, dude. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's like, like I said, it's nothing personal. I'm sure you're a fine, fine human being. What do you mean this line is not like people from the South? It has nothing to do with being, is he even from the South? What are you even talking about? That's not a Southern accent. That is an Owen Wilson accent. If you say, gee, wow. No one's like, oh, what Southern city are you pretending you have an accent from? They're like, oh, Owen Wilson. Southern accent. Power switch. Uh, oh, there's no reset switch on this case. That can be a bit of a pain in the butt. But it's like it's one of those things where it only costs you five seconds to hold down the power button. But the only time you need a reset switch is when you're like really mad already. So I'm always kind of torn when I see no reset switch. It's like it's not a real problem. It's just something that I get really frustrated by when when I'm really frustrated already and I realize I have no reset switch. Apparently Larry the Cable Guy is a fake southerner. Do you ever watch Formula One? No, I can't say that I do. I am, I am not a car guy in, in, the, in the truest sense, guys. I just... I just don't care. It's like, for me, there's, there's one critical question I've got to ask myself when it comes to motorsports, um, or like motor vehicles, really, because not motorsports, I'm not really into any motorsports, but for motor vehicles, there's just one question. How many wheels does it have? And if the answer is more than two, then we in trouble, because it, it ain't gonna pique my interest. I really got to get my bike on the road. I haven't insured it yet this season. And I'm like, I can always feel it around this time of year. Like, I'll just be kind of cranky. And I'll be like, what? What is it? And then I'll be like, motorcycle withdrawal. I go, I insure my bike. I go up for a ride, you know, get the wind whipping around me. I'm like, yeah, that's better. Totally take, takes care of it. Every season, every season. I don't even ride that much. And I don't get out on the track or anything like that. I had a track day planned. I was going to go down to Laguna Seca with a friend. And I was going to do my first track day. I um, was super, super excited about it. And then it ended up being canceled due to coronavirus. Obviously, that's a very first world problem. I'm not saying that uh, you, know, you guys should feel bad for me or anything. I just I was jazzed to do it. And I didn't get a chance to. Because we haven't really broed out in a long time since he moved down there. Um, so it would have been really nice to hang out with my friend and also... Uh, Go ride my bike real fast around a track, but we weren't able to make it happen. I did leave things, I hope, on good terms with those guys, and they're still uh, hopefully going to be in business when all this is over, so I would like to get down there, but uh, did not work out for now. All right, so that's it. Front I.O. is hooked up. I realize I kind of um, 
stopped talking to you guys about what I'm doing for a, a little bit there, so let's do a quick recap. So we plugged in the front panel audio over here. It only goes in one way. Plugged in front USB 2 right there. Plugged in the front switches. They're conveniently labeled on this motherboard. I don't understand why any motherboard doesn't have them labeled. I mean, you already have to silk screen a bunch of crap onto the PCB. You might as well silk screen the labels for that. So that's really nice. Uh, USB 3 is right here, 24 pin, 8 pin, and that's everything that we need to connect to the motherboard with the exception, haha, whoops, almost got, almost got got right there, with the exception of this right here. So this is a 4 pin, oh, not that, this. This is a 4 pin addressable RGB connector, and I'm going to put that onto the header on the motherboard so we can actually use software to control the RGB lighting in the case. Super nice. Love it. Love it. Actually, should I bother? You know what? I don't care. Okay, that's what we would do. I'm not going to bother though because then I have to install software to show you guys the RGB lighting. So I'm just going to hook it up to the button that's built into the case. This is a nice implementation. I like it. It's nice to have that choice, you know? Oh, cool. And they even include a little adapter so you can take their connector that they're using plug that into the end of the string you've already got, and then plug in some standard strips. Real nice. You guys thought of everything, didn't you? Good job, Deep Cool. All right, I am going to uh, use their adapter doodad for my fans. I'm actually going to use, uh, we're going to tie it into CPU temps. So I'm going to use the Alt uh, CPU connector up here, which is also like a pump connector. That's going to handle all of our, ah, oh, should we? No, let's use, a, let's use a case fan connector. We'll use a chassis, chassis connector. So I'm going to use the one down here. This is a nice. Value boards have come such a long way. Like I remember back in the day, you'd be lucky if you had, you know, two fan headers, one for CPU and one back here for a rear case fan on like a, a budget board. Nowadays, you can get like a decent motherboard with everything you really need for not a lot of money. All right. Should we plug in a graphics card? I think we should. I already ran through this a little bit earlier on the stream, but for those of you who weren't here, the RTX 2060 KO from EVGA is a special edition RTX 2060 that is going to have about the same performance as a regular one in games, but because it uses physically a different graphics processing unit, it'll have better performance in like uh, compute applications. So if you're a, a pro on a budget, and you're looking for a GPU, this is basically the way to go. Oh, look at that, it has a DVI connector. Oh, I wonder if that's how they nerf it. I didn't realize this only has a single DisplayPort connector. That's a bit of a drag, honestly speaking. Huh, well, that's how they nerfed it. Cool, now we know. I'm gonna go ahead and plunk that bad boy right there. And uh, I went and put away all the screws, but I still need some of those. So now we need 632s. The ones at the back of the case are always 632. Almost always 632. Basically always 632. Oh, okay, this is a bit of a design flaw in the case. That's not great. When you've got like a big old uh, barrier interfering with plugging in the screws, that sort of, sort of bites. That's real hard to put in straight there. So with thumb screws, it wouldn't be quite so bad because then you could at least start them easily. Oh, that it doesn't help I'm doing this left-handed either. Mm. Well, it would be fine if I was doing it left-handed. The problem is that I'm not doing it left-handed because I'm not left-handed. I'm just doing it with my left hand. Okay. And you know, Better to, better to not do something at all than to do it with your left hand. That's what I always tell my wife. Ah, this sucks. <laughs> okay, that's in there. I am not bothering to put in the other one because one is enough. I have an SV650S, uh, David Shaw. All right, well, that's in there. Not the greatest experience ever, but. Napin and Maten says, shave, please, shave. And Sophie LMAO, Linus homeless tips. Yeah, well, you know. 
Look, it's only during the COVID, it's only during my COVID isolation. Um, let's see. Sorry, I just got to put this. Uh, see, when I said your 8 pin, you can tell which one's the CPU because it's 4 by 4, or 4 and 4 instead of 6 and 2. So you can tell this one's PCI Express. There we go. All right, cool. Ah, I wish this connector wasn't just dangling there. But like I said, it's a good power supply, not a, not a great power supply. There you go. All right. This computer is like mostly built, at least from this side. Da, 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 da. Still got some work to do. Let's plug in. Let's do. Let's do some cable management first. So our eight pin is going to go into these little convenient cable management spots right along the edge here, that are designed for just such an occasion. All right. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Oh, uh, would probably be better to change the camera, wouldn't it? We can do that. Hold on. First, let me just put that bad boy on there. There we are. Oh, two. Who cares about cable management? Come on, guys. We got to try at least a little bit. We have to sort of look like we thought about making an effort. How about that? That'll be the standard for this for this build. So we'll throw that guy on there. You don't actually need that many cable ties to take it from total rat's nest to fairly reasonable. All right. And let's, you know, pop that on right there. Uh, where'd my cable ties go? This is actually an SSD mount, not a cable tie point, but... Uh, I'm not mounting a SATA SSD, so I don't care. Now it's a cable tie mounting point. There we go. Those guys can sit there like that. You know, a little something like that. It seems all right. This can jam down there. You know, we jam in now. Just going to tie that one down there. Actually, as we get to um, the front of the case here, there's a little bit more that I might want to tie together in one, in one bundle. So that looks, that looks pretty good for one bundle. Yeah. Okay. Can't tell if you guys can see what I'm doing or not. It's the challenge of not having a camera operator. That's okay. I'm embracing, I'm embracing my isolation here. I might never go back to the office. I'm going back to the office. Working from home is not as good as working from the office. It was kind of fun for a little bit, but then it was over. <laughs> oh man, that is really tight. Okay. Yes, got it. So now we are, we're going to put them side by side so that it'll go down flat enough that we're going to be able to close that side panel. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to jam all these extra bits. What is this? Where did this come from? Oh yeah, I know what this is. This is for the front fans. Do, 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 do. So we're going to run this over here for now. And then we're just going to jam all these extra bits down into the bottom of the case there. Look, I said we were just trying to make it look like we tried a bit. I didn't say we were doing a perfect job here. Ah, eh. There we go. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. There's our fans. What is that? Oh, wait, what? Okay. And muted. <laughs> all right. Um, here's all the RGB wire. Oh, the RGB wiring is stuck under there. Man, when I show you guys the table that I'm working on, you are going to flip out. I'll, I'll show you at the end of the stream. I can't do anything to it right now, but it's kind of hilarious. All right, I'm just going to jam all the RGB wiring under there. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, I'll like secure it right there. Cool. 
Trust me, it's like the funniest thing ever. You will love it. Let me just say this table is not, is not a chest height or waist height table at all. It's, it's a much lower table. Okay. Um, all right, let's plug in these. So we'll go right there. No. Go right. Can this one reach one of them? I'm just gonna undo this. I uh, I tied these together just so I could keep track of them, keep all the fan power together before. All right, so that goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there. Perfect. Now we're gonna jam all of it down there. Hey. All right. I could put another cable tie on here, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, maybe I should bother. No, it seems good enough. There! That's not so bad, as long as you ignore this part, which we can, because we're never going to see it again. Let's throw the side panel back on. Wait, no. Wait, yes. Am I going to bother to boot this thing up? Do I even like need to? That was it. That was how to build a computer. I guess we could turn it on to make sure that it actually works. But then, oof, I don't have a monitor. Uh, this could be slightly problematic. Really did not think this through. Let's see, this is the problem. If I was at the office, getting a monitor is just a matter of, um, you know, hey, gotta, you gotta grab a monitor, and that'll take one minute. At home, I would have to go disentangle my desktop computer from my, uh, from my setup. And that would be really, really, really awful right about now. Do I even have enough power outlets here? I've got one. Uh, no, I do maybe have enough. Wait, what is this? Is this plugged into anything? Oh yeah, okay. Maybe I could power it up. Okay, I will, I will consider it. How would I be able to do that though? Okay, maybe if I killed the webcam feed and then I actually ran it through a capture card. Oh, okay. Maybe that could work. Give me one sec, guys. All right, here's an AVIO 4K. Handy dandy little USB 3 capture card. I'm going to unplug the, oh man, I hope the stream doesn't like crash or something. Okay, I'm, I'm, at least gonna, I'm at least gonna power it on so we can see the lights turn on before I try and do anything. Because if I, if I completely break the stream, then I'll just end it there instead of, I'll, I'll quit while I'm ahead instead of trying to fire it up. All right, so USB 3 goes into that. I'm in my living room, so. I'm just going to plug this into my uh, VR PC. Uh -huh. Okay, webcam is on. And then I've got just a six foot HDMI cable here. I'm going to move the system over to the other side. Right there. And then I'm just going to run this down the front here. Okay, that's sort of the best we can do. Okay. Uh, now we've got, ah, yes, good, this. Oh, I've got another idea. Oh, this could work. Oh, this might, okay. We might just be crazy enough to get away with this, guys, because, where'd it go? Ah, yes, I've got my, Rocket Sova here, so I could go retrieve that from the tangle of wires behind my VR PC, and we could plug that in. First, let's see if the thing actually posts, though, because if it doesn't, we are not uh, we are not going to do a whole troubleshooting stream here. So, video capture device, uh, add existing, AVIO, 4K. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so is that here? I cannot tell. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and fire it up. Well, we'll try. We're gonna try. Man, I've got a lot of extension cords daisy chained here. And moment of truth. All right, she powers, so that's a good sign. There's no like postcode indicator on this or anything, so we don't have too much information yet. No fan spin at the front? What you talking about? We got plenty of fan spin at the front, ladies and gentlemen. You just, you can't really see them. They're definitely spinning in there. Yeah, there you go. See, we got, we got plenty of fan spin. Okay. We got so much fan spin, they're like, they're more like meat than fans, you know? So much, so much spin. Okay. Um, so I just don't really know what happened with that source. I don't know why. Oh, wait, let's do a deactivate and activate on it. Uh, is that something happening? I can't tell. Resolution and FPS, device default. Uh-huh. Okay, we've got something. That, that's, that's it. That, that's, a, that's a thing. That's a thing, all right. Got a black square going on here. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, HDMI. Oh, uh, there's your problem. <laughs> all right, all right. We got the capture card plugged in, but we, we plugged the HDMI into the back of the computer. We didn't put that. Oh, wow. That barely, barely reaches. That might come apart at any moment. Okay. Unfortunately, I used the one long HDMI cable that I have at home to plug into the camera. So we're, we're stuck with that. Okay. Oh, interesting. Hey, whoa. Looks like Jake preloaded an operating system for me. How about that? Okay. Okay, we're we in business. Does this thing have built-in Wi- Oh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, I can solve this. Yes, yes, I can solve this. Okay, BRB. I need an Ethernet cable. Uh, I need an Ethernet cable. Actually, before I need an Ethernet cable, I need the uh, cord for the Sova. Okay. All right, let's try that first. Let's just make sure, make sure that's working. Da -da 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 -da. Hey. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. And yourself? Fine, just fine, okay. It's intended to go in your lap, but, uh... hey, 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 nice, nice. We in, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what he's loaded up on here, and I think this is running at um, 30 hertz. Oh, wow, it is very hard for me to for me to see anything on there. All right, one sec. In before the stream crashes. No, no, we're mostly out of the woods at this point, you guys. This is this is not this is not bad. Okay. Oh, I made my OBS a lot bigger. All right, let's try. Let's see if we can change it to. Oh, this mouse does not track well on this mouse pad, unfortunately. Okay, we run in 1080. And what do you think is going to happen if I change it to 60 hertz? Wish me luck here, guys. What's that, 50 now? Oh, you know what? My preview is probably 30 because I'm streaming at 30 FPS. Okay, well, there's your problem. Either way, you know, we're going we're gonna to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. Let's... Uh, Let's fire up some, some, let's do a classic. Let's go with a classic. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all right? Wow, this mouse hates this mouse pad or the sensor is dirty or something because this is barely usable. Wait, did I press go? Uh, start in offline mode. Let's give it a shot. What do you think? What are the odds that uh, 
Jake fired this up once before, so it's authenticated already. I'm going to go with 20%. You can count on him to like pre-install the stuff, but I don't think it's going to be just like ready to launch in offline mode. There's no way he would have seen that one coming. Currently in offline mode. Okay. Library. Library. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is apparently running. Oh, yeah. And where would I find that running application? Well, it's really hard to see around this camera. Where, where would I find that, that running application, pray tell, Steam? Preparing to launch Shadow of the Tomb Raider. OK. You know what? In the meantime, I'm going to go get an Ethernet cable. OK. We, we, we got a solution here. Ethernet. Got it. Yes, error occurred. That, we expected that. That was an expected outcome. Okay. Hopefully we already have Ethernet drivers pre-installed because otherwise that is going to be kind of a pain in the arse. All right. Let's plug in. Can he reach the network switch? His chicken arms. The answer is yes. Oh man, my living room is full destroyed right now. Okay, I cannot see, uh, yes? Okay, let's try that again. Boop. Here we go, we got this. Uh, okay, I made that small again. You know what? Here, let's just restart. Yep, okay. What's those black bars on the top? I don't know what it's doing. I should do some super chats though. Viewer activity. Uh, this is not wide enough to work. It's like, oh man, the guys who worked on this interface, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm sure you meant well, but boy, is it ever awful. Oh, wow, there's a lot of super chats. I apologize in advance for not being able to get through all of them, you guys. There are, there are far too many. Uh, thanks, RLEN. That was like an hour and a half ago. Uh, Readith says, hey, Linus, what monitor are you using on your desk at home and why? Uh, I'm using, oh, how big is the stupid thing? Is it like the 37 inch one, the, the LG ultra wide 144 Hertz. That's like uh, 3840 by 1600. I like it because it has super, super responsive pixels. You can tell from the pixels, you know, um, Tommy gun, bearded Linus, hashtag no homo. All right. Yep. Thank you for that. And you too, Cody, uh, Robert says, when shows early today. No, no, when show is not early today. Um, a WAN show will probably end up being late today because I'm working on this right now. <laughs> Hello. Okay, why is that computer not working? Okay, what's up, my homies? Says keep the beard. Robert says I sense a dollar ship by dollar sh uh, sponsorship by Dollar Shave Club soon. No, I think they're more into people who shave. Right now, I think I am not uh, Dollar Shave Club's target demographic. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I need to do a quick... Oh, it is working. Oh, I was looking at the stream feed. Uh, yep, okay, well, there's your problem. Uh, okay, cool. So, oh man, do I remember the credentials for this? Uh, okay, is that not working now? Dang it, nothing is ever easy, you know? 
Please tell me this is working. Oh, it was dead for a second there. You know what, I'm going to plug into USB 3 ports. Uh, not because I think a keyboard needs USB 3 speeds, but they tend to have better power delivery, and this is uh, keyboard and mouse over one port. Uh... I'm not sure. Oh. Did he get it? He got it. I upgraded my internet recently, so I want to do a game update before I actually play a game because it's awesome. Let's see how fast it comes down. Oh, it's done. Let's see if we can find something else to update. Let's update this one. And it's done. I went gigabit because I've been transferring footage back to the office from uh, my shoots that I've been doing here at the house. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been pretty incredible. Um, and it only cost me like an extra 10 bucks a month compared to my existing plan. So I'm pretty stoked. Uh, yeah, I had Yvonne call in. She's like, oh yeah, it looks like they don't have gigabit with unlimited data. And I'm like, no, no, I'm sure that they do. And um, so we called, and not only did they have that, but there was a deal where if we signed a contract for two years or whatever, then it was much cheaper. And I have no problem signing a contract with TELUS for two years, even though I've had some bad experiences with them, just because Shaw has nothing comparable, and as far as I can tell, nothing on the roadmap to compete with their, with their fiber. So we're, we're, we're stuck with TELUS for better or for worse. They've actually, the service has been excellent. So I don't want to I don't want to hate on the service, uh, like like the not the customer service like the the internet service has been very reliable. Once we got through all the whole thing where they like sent an offer to my house and I didn't actually have that service available here, so I said, hey, yeah, I do want it. I want this offer, but you guys haven't installed it in my neighborhood yet. And they were like, well, too bad. I'm like, well, look, I'm not the one who sent a flyer to my house. Why are you guys? you know, sending me offers for things that aren't available and not being unwilling to honor them a couple months later when you actually install in my neighborhood. Anyway, we got it all sorted out. It's all good. Uh, all right, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna run the benchmark, I guess. I'm running on medium. I disabled motion blur because it's stupid and let's see how this puppy performs. I mean, it's gonna perform, you know, about like you'd expect, I would think. I can read some super chats in the meantime, though. This is such a jank setup. Oh, I'm gonna do a YouTube story right now. This is hilarious. All right. Let's just turn this around, use a selfie camera. Just doing a casual PC build stream here, you know, building a PC with the jankiest setup ever. See, I can see myself over there and got my Twitch chat and my YouTube chat and everything. Look at this capture card hovering in midair. Oh, that was slightly over 15 seconds. Okay, we got to try one more time. Sorry, guys, one sec. Just at home doing a game stream. Game stream? That's not what I'm doing. See, I don't even know what I'm doing. This is why I need my staff to write things for me. Just at home doing a PC build stream. You know, got my PC, got my you know wall, got my incredibly janky setup. Twitch chat, YouTube chat. Is that a capture card hovering in midair? Yes, it is. All right, we'll go ahead and post that. And that, my friends, is how the magic is made. <laughs> now I gotta post that to YouTube. Hello. Man, YouTube stories is like, it's pretty bad compared to Instagram's implementation. Like this is just frozen. It'll wake up eventually, but it hasn't yet. Oh, I just got the message of the week. I, my phone is completely locked up. Thank you for that. And the funny thing is I'm only using this phone instead of the Fold because YouTube Stories is completely not available on the Fold. It, was working, and then it wasn't, and then it was, and now it isn't again. 
really frustrating. Okay, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for the YouTube app. Hello, YouTube app. You can do it, buddy. Well, whatever. We're just gonna post that to Instagram for the time being. And if YouTube wants that stuff in their stories, then they can have a better app. See, look, it is already posted to Instagram. Just like that. Oh, hey, there it is. Wait, what is this? That's the wrong clip. No, I clicked the wrong one. Oh, no. Okay, I'm just gonna not interrupt it this time. <sighs> I will read some super chats. Uh, the Phoenix says, I should shave on stream. That's not a bad idea. I think there would, be, there would be riots in the street though, based on how many people are telling me to keep the beard. Like 404 Velox and Bobby and uh, Ishak. And these are just all people that are sending super chats about the beard. And Josiah. Oh, Lordy. Um, nostalgia trip one says, if I upgrade to M.2, what's the best, me best method to transfer the OS from a two and a half inch SSD? Um, you know what? I'm not 100% sure because I know that those drives would require different, like I know going from like IDE mode to HCI was a big problem back in the day because you were operating the SSD's controller in like a different mode and there were different drivers involved. I don't know how easy it is to go from SATA to NVMe. I do see that our benchmark run is done though. That's looking pretty swell. Average FPS of 107 running Tomb Raider on medium. It's a good looking game on medium. All right, what else we got here? Uh, quit the game, yes. We could play some CSGO through a capture card at 30 frames per second. Uh, if you guys wanna see me fail real bad, then we could do that. Why don't we do that? Let's play, some, let's play some CSGO, shall we? And eventually, maybe this story will post. See, it's still working on it. It's still working on it over there. It's so brutal. It's usually better than this. Like, this is particularly bad. Austin Berger says, this man knows nothing about building computers. Don't fall for it, it's all a sham. You're on to me. Uh, Justin, thank you. Thanks, Chris. More beard stuff. Sam CH says, show more breast. We might forget about the beard. All right, fair enough. Uh, Highlander, I'm spending $5 to tell you the beard looks good and you should keep it. Okay, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I can't read all the beard comments. Uh, I will read anything not beard. Uh, Gall says, you may have mentioned this earlier, but using the Ryzen 5 and an ASRock B450 Pro, it needs an update for the BIOS. I, yes. Uh, and anything that's on the shelf now should be updated by this point. That's only true of stock that hasn't been updated to a newer BIOS. Um, Robert says, is there supposed to be a live stream chat on Floatplane Mobile? No, I don't think that works yet. Um, yeah, it's very much a work in progress. Uh, Big Benson says, how far along is the mouse pad? Um, yeah, COVID has not made it any faster. You are in fact correct about that. Um, we're still working on finalizing a supplier. We want something that is up to the quality standards that we expect. Uh, Sky Sane says, when are you coming to Toronto? Um, no time soon. How about that? Uh, uh, Jonathan says, here's a tunie towards a new screwdriver. Thank you. I think I get about 70% of that. But hey, it adds up. It adds up. I actually have a screwdriver plan. I'm gonna get a Swiss Army knife. Oh, look at that, it's ready, it's ready. My YouTube story is ready. Post, hey, good job, good job YouTube app. Uh, Tony says, why the KO over the 5600 XT? Driver issues seem to be ironed out over here on Team Red. And that's why, because if I had a dollar for every time I saw the message, the driver issues seem to be mostly resolved now, I would have enough to buy a KO. Um, it's just the way it is. I'm not a fanboy. Love the CPUs right now. I just like stuff that just works the first time. Um, Joshua says, wonder if you ever saw my RG Rig reboot video. It was one with the LTT underwear and the literal garbage fire. I don't know if I did catch that one. Also guys, just to be clear, that doesn't mean that we haven't recommended AMD cards in the past. When 
the driver issues are good and they've got them sorted out, we have recommended them many times, but the KO does happen to be a particularly uh, great value right now, especially if you do more than just game. Uh, Jack Wall says, I have a printer and want to help with the face shield project. Where can I find the clear bit? Um, it's laser cut. Oh, I forget what material it is that we're using, but that's going to be in the video that we're going to have up pretty shortly. Uh, thanks, Andy Xiong. Xiong? X-I-O-N-G. However I pronounce that. Uh, thanks, Tom. Appreciate the super chat. Oh, I'm almost at the end. Okay, no more super chats. Don't send more super chats. Um, thanks, Adam Quasi. Thanks, Kachiku. Uh, Nick says, refund of the unsolicited refund Colton gave me for my LTX snafu. I told you, it's fine. We had no problem giving you a refund for it. Wow, that's a $200 super chat. 200 euro super chat. Now that the Canadian dollar is worth nothing, that's a lot. Well, thank you very much, but like... I really feel like the right thing for us to do was to refund you. Um, it is what it is, I guess, at this point. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to, uh, okay, that's it, for, that's it for Super Chats. I am bringing this up. Ah, here we go. Let's play some CSGO. Should we do official matchmaking? No, let's do a community server browser. Uh, yes, 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 I understand. Oh boy, that is so small that I cannot see it at all. Um, fantastic. Also, half the screen is hidden behind a thing there. Uh, maybe if I could just move this over. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's a lot better. Okay, so let's find one. So these are sorted by ping right now. All right. Ah, I can't see it all. It's already kind of full screenish. Uh, okay, so we want one that's not locked. How about... Um, where where's the mat? Does it list the mat? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. How about this one? Ten player dust two server? Oh, is that a twenty player office server? Sure. Nope. That one's password protected. I can't I can't see the locks from here. They're so small. Uh Inferno. There's a twelve person dust two. Can we get a dust two with more capacity maybe? I'm okay with Office as well. Oh, that one's locked. Gosh darn it. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, okay. Hard to tell what mine it's on. Oh, that one. Okay, join game. Wait, what? What? Now what? I don't get it. So you have to... So you can have passwords that are on this side now? Wait, what? Am I in or not? I appear to be in. Okay, woo! Here we go. Uh, what's going on, are these bots or what? What game mode is this? Okay, apparently this is not a normal game mode. Oh, okay, so this is just like a... Wait, are people, no, these are, did I just get killed by a bot? Darn it. Okay, so I'm supposed to attack terrorists. Wow, this is really choppy. I'm not blaming the computer, though. Um, all right, I got to enable developer console. Enabled, yes. How's our FPS doing? Oh, yeah, we got a few hundred FPS. No, no, no. Good. Oh, I can't see my crosshair. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, apparently, that was a pop-up from the previous server that never went away. Thank you for give in uh, chat there. I cannot see my crosshair from here. This is the worst. This is actually a terrible, terrible gaming experience. I, I, really, I really don't blame the computer, though. I built a good computer, just through a capture card on a window on my TV across the room with a camera in the way is not the best. Wait, I have a shotgun now. Why do I have a shotgun? Well, I gotta get closer then. Oh no! Okay, where are we at? What, what gun do I have? Oh, okay, I've got a shotgun again. Okay, that's fine. I can work with that. That's the no aim required weapon. Hey, where are y'all hiding at? I'm surprised more of you haven't joined already. 
No, come on! Wow, I am getting dominated by a bot. This may be the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Come on, kill something, please. Please, please. Is something dead? I can't tell. I can't see the messages. Did I kill anything? I can't tell. Yes, I killed someone. Good. About time. Oh, there's a bad guy. Oh, yes. Got another one. What did the kids say? Got him. I can't see the chat, so I have no idea if the stream is even still running right now. Okay. Where are you at, terrorists? Oh, and I'm dead. Cool. All right. Well, I think we have established now that the computer is, in fact, working. It's gaming. It's a pretty rockin' little system for 800 bucks. That is a very, very good gaming experience. It's not the cheapest gaming rig by any stretch of the imagination, but this is where you really get into that like fantastic bang for the buck range. I'm just gonna hide this. Um, where every dollar is contributing to making this a better system. Or to the RGB lighting. E, not bad, right? Let's cycle through all the included modes here. Hold on, I'm just going to adjust that so you can't see my windows quite as much. Ah, that's pretty good. There we go, we got purple. We got white. Oh, wow, we even got some effects. Those are addressable RGB LED fans. Very nice. Someone says it's not live on YouTube. Very funny. I can see it live on YouTube. I have moved it now. All right. Oh, oh, that was a nice little like fading effect that we were looking at before. Wow, there's a lot of different lighting effects. Jeez. Okay, well, that's quite enough lighting effects for us to go through right now, I think. Okay, cool. You know what? Let's pick a favorite one. Oh, I think I passed my favorite one. Dang it. Where's the one I want? Not that one. 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 Dang it. Is that it? No, there's a more rainbowy one. Hey, there it is. Love it. That's what I'm sticking with. So thank you for tuning in to this fun, I hope, little PC building stream. I actually just realized I have no idea how many people are even watching it. 21,000 apparently. Well, thank you very much for that, you guys. And that's on YouTube alone. I have no counter on uh, Twitch or... Oh yeah, I do have one on Twitch. I can pull that up. Apparently there's uh, 2,400 watching over there and I have no counter for Floatplane. All right, I promised you guys I was going to show you the janky setup before I signed off, so I'm going to do that now. This is absolutely nuts. I'm just going to plug the webcam back in and hope that that just immediately works. What are the odds? I'm going with 70%. Uh, Hello? Okay, hold on. Maybe it's just a matter of going in and deactivating and then activating it. Come on, baby. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! We got, wait, oh. Okay, yes, good. All right, we're good. All right, I'm going to show you guys the setup now. This is redonkadonk. So holding the webcam was this C-stand. I'm going to try and get this as steady as I can here. So this C-stand holding the webcam, all right, which was plugged into the front ports of my VR gaming setup down there. In the other front port is the CamLink 4K that uh, you're going to see in my streaming setup upgrade video. So I stole that from my computer upstairs. And then, plugged into that, I've got an HDMI to DVI adapter and then a DVI to HDMI cable going into my Canon C200 camera. So this is the one nice piece of gear in this whole setup. Actually, no. Uh, my wireless lab is also a nice piece of gear. So that's a Electrosonics, whatever the crap, super, super nice wireless lab. Um, all right, so the camera is on a tripod, is plugged into doo -doo 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 -doo. this 
power squid, which is plugged into that extension cord, and then is also plugged into this extension cord, which is powering the computer. When I was gaming, I had replaced the webcam, uh, the webcam slot over there with this capture card, which was suspended in the air here because that was as close as, uh, or that was as far as it could reach since I only have this super short HDMI cable to go into the back of the computer. Lighting is taken care of by one of these, uh, what are they called, Quasar Science something or others, but this is a pretty nice light. And then I've got an Aperture 300D uh, Mark II over there. And then there's another Quasar behind the couch giving it that blue glow there. So, yep. Oh yeah, right, the jankiest part. This is my coffee table on paint cans and some spare uh, two by two pieces of wood from some Ikea furniture. So that's, uh, yep. There, this is the view from the camera's angle. Pretty terrible. Love it. All right. Uh, oh, right. And then switching scenes is handled by my, my air mouse uh, Bluetooth keyboard mouse doodad. So I've just got a hotkey on here. Whew. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And we will see you. OK, no, moving the, moving the camera down wasn't really an option because if I'm like sitting there, it's hard to like build a computer. Oh, I guess I could have sat. But it's really low. It's too low. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, good stream. Good stream, fun stream. See you uh, in an hour on WAN Show, I guess. <laughs>